So when I heard uh, one of my friend from uh, Bosch, who's also a previous uh, podcast guest, Santosh share, you know, you should have Achala on the podcast. I was, I was, uh, you know, rearing to go very excited because if Santosh is recommending, then uh, it is a podcast that is essentially should be done. And when I read about uh, what Achala has been doing, what's a background, I was like, oh, that's that's fascinating. Let's, uh, I want her. Uh, to be on my podcast so thanks achala for coming on board uh, it's it's an honor and a pleasure to have you here thank you so much sunil yes it's an honor to be here yes so achala paladanda uh, pani is the full name that's when i saw that i was like oh, i should ask her what her name and the surname means but then i think i'll wait for wait for a few more minutes to get into that then, uh, officially she's been in the uh, fostering space for uh, abandoned puppies especially and I think also you work with cats if I get it right for the last 14 years man that's that's amazing so for 14 years uh, she's been helping uh, abandoned puppies get another safe secure home and ensuring that before they get that uh, they are also taken care of uh, well fed and uh, you know well taken care of and it's it's as and when you say 14 years, I think it, it's it's something that uh, hats off to your commitment, dedication and all of that. So, And then 4,000 plus puppies fostered. Uh, you know, you also run the Indie Dog program where people uh, can adopt these fostered uh, puppies and uh, give, give them a new home, or give them a new life. So you've been uh, trained in London, or she's been trained in London uh, in Dogs Trust. Also, in terms of animal sanctuary, she's been trained. Uh, a lot of awards have come in terms of Young Achievers Award uh, by Brigade in 2010, NK Pillai Foundation Award in 2010 again. Uh, yeah, there are, I think the list goes on uh, and uh, it, it's it's a pleasure to have you here. And as soon as I saw your photos uh, on, the, uh, on the website and also a few other uh, blog posts, I think I am raring to go with a lot of questions. Um, and uh, you know trying to understand what what you do how you do it uh, what yeah, you, yeah. you do so thank you once again Achala. yes thank you for having me yes it's absolutely my pleasure to be here yeah so 4000 plus puppies fostered over 14 years how how did it start actually uh, as an organization um, it's 14 years. We finished our 14th year and we start our 15th year just like two, three days ago. Um, but personally, if you look at it, this is this is my 23rd, 24th year with animals. So much before I started the organization for about nine, 10 years, I volunteered with different organizations. I had already rescued and saved a thousand puppies almost. And I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I had to start my NGO. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Her uh, NGO is uh, Let's Live Together. Mm. Yes, it's called Let's Live Together. Actually, Let's Live Together uh, was created as my final year project. I'm a Chitrakala Parishad graduate oh, where wow. uh, I did advertising. And for my final year advertising project, I actually created Let's Live Together through which I wanted to promote uh, adoption. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a final year project coming together and uh, changing so much of a landscape for you, for, for so many other families and, and for all these puppies as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, yeah. for listeners. It's been yeah. a, a fantastic journey. It's been a fantastic journey, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can go ahead and share a little more anecdotes, a little more uh, experiences. I am I am here to listen to you. <laughs> Okay, so um, so when I was in college, I had uh, these two dogs of mine in college who were my best friend and who would like follow me everywhere in college. So I, I, I would go to the canteen, they would come with me to the canteen, I would go to the class, my dogs were in the class, they would sit and wait there. Um, I would go to the loo, they'll sit outside the loo and wait for me. Uh, so these two dogs were like my best friends in college. So anywhere anybody saw the dogs, they knew that I was around. You know, or if they had to look for me, they just had to look for the dog. They would find them around. Uh, their names were Babe and Patchy. 
normal uh, indie dogs rescue dogs you know living on the street and then they move into college and that's where they were living for a very long time and um, so for 5 years i would go out for lunch with them i would buy them biscuits and i was uh, a vegan back then also so then i would buy myself soy milk and uh, get them biscuits and i would come back to college for lunch after lunch so um, after college uh you know i actually took up a normal job like everybody else i took up a commercial job but uh, in less than a month to two months time this girl like my friend uh, this dog this uh, female dog called babe actually met with an accident in college in ckp itself mm-hmm. and she was run over oh. So Avaga uh I had to go like meet her in the hospital and from there on I started going to the hospital twice a day I I had just taken up a very recent job and uh, I would I would take a break from my job and you know tell my boss saying just one hour I'll go meet her and come back and I would do this twice a day I did that for almost uh, 10 days and those 10 days in fact uh, at the hospital that she was in they kept saying no she's not going to make it just put her down I'll survive Avagala ye sunne ya kisht maarti ra anta ಬಟ್ ಆ ಹತ್ತು ದಿನ ನಾನು ಹೋಗಿ ಅವಳಿಗೆ ಬೆಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಫುಲ್ ಕ್ಲೀನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವಳ ಜೊತೆ ಒಂದು ಒನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕೂತು ಆಮೇಲೆ ನಾನು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೆ ಸೊ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆನ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಮೈ ಬಾಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಜಾಬ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಡಾಗ್ ಹೋಮ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಶೂರ್ ಶೀ ಇಸ್ ಫೈನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಯು ನೋ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ನಾವ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಯು ರಿಯಲಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಲೈಕ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಗೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಡಾಗ್ ಹೋಮ್ so and it was exactly at that time when that hospital kept saying that either you put her down or you take her home we can't keep her any more because you know like uh, it's it's time it's already been 10 days and then i quit my job uh i went and picked her from the hospital and i took her home and i had her for home and for about 5 and a half 6 months i was with her at home she was in my room uh completely paralyzed uh, her tailbone her pelvic bone everything was broken multiple fractures my mother is an ayurvedic uh, acupuncture doctor mm-hmm. okay. so she would always treat all my puppies that i rescued so she ended up treating babe also and um, every day we would do like multiple sessions of massages and all that stuff and for 6 months she had no movement or sensation in her hind legs and her tail and the end of 6 months is when she slowly started moving and she started uh, you know showing some signs and within within a span of 3 weeks from there she actually started walking so for me those 6 months in my life my only aim was to make her walk and by the end of 6 months when she started walking it for me was like the the biggest miracle of my life and that's when i decided that uh, you know i i wanted to do something much more in life than just go back to a normal corporate job uh yeah also also i put her back in college and after that she lived for a good 4 5 years after going back to college yeah mm, awesome so that's that's a lot of uh, love dedication uh, interest and i think full full fledged devotion to uh, getting me back to college yeah 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 i i had to like those 6 months of my life yeah yeah <laughs> i think when 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 we hear of stories in uh, people abandon people uh, to to see and hear your story i think it it, it takes uh, a lot of courage a lot of strength and i think also thanks to your mom for you know enabling you through that 6 months and uh, keeping you and uh, you know babe in the same place treating it feels nice yeah, to yeah. it feels nice uh, we are and i am sure there are many other stories uh, you know that uh, your people from people from uh, people that you've met people that you've helped uh, you know take a foster uh, place or you know even in terms of adoption home they have they have very similar very interesting stories so how does it feel uh, when you when you hear of these uh, you know, success stories from people who adopt these uh, indie dogs um so so if you look at the number back then and uh, the number of people adopting back then like i'm talking about 20 years ago and talk about now um there's definitely firstly m- much more awareness among the um educated or elite crowd saying yes you know like we we want to be a part of the change and we do not want to go buy a dog from a breeder or a pet shop and they do understand that that is not an ethical choice anymore and the right way to go about it to have a dog 
is to adopt a homeless puppy who doesn't have any money so that kind of awareness definitely um, there's there's a lot of awareness right now and it's it's very very nice to see that people who can afford to buy uh, a breed dog for 40000 or 50000 or a lakh or two actually make that conscious choice saying no i actually want to take a dog who was born on the street and who has nobody and who wants that home and uh, that's the kind of massive change that we see right now because it's fantastic so in terms of awareness i think uh, bangalore i think we are definitely very grateful there's a lot of awareness right now um yes there are, there are a lot of uh, stories you know where uh, adoption changes people's lifestyle so much because we also are living in a very um fast paced world where every everyone's working and everyone's so busy with their lives and you know you you come back home you chill a little and then you you know you're off to sleep or like there's no bonding as such in between families right everyone sitting with a cell phone everyone sitting with netflix or something or the other that keeps them occupied but together as a as a family i have seen so many families who now are like so much and so beautifully bonded simply because they have a dog that actually is like a common a uh, factor for them for all to be emotionally involved for all to them you know like all of them like in fact um are are much more happier i i see that in most fam- families and it's it's just beautiful to see that like my pups uh, who not just needed love but now you know are actually going and transforming families and transforming homes who needed this love as well yeah mm-hmm. so i i uh, see that you uh chose my pups so i am uh, very interested to see uh, <laughs> get your reaction on on it uh, in terms of when when the pup leaves uh, from from you know your place or from a place that's being faster to another family what goes through uh, with you um so earlier i used to be extremely uh, attached and i've cried i've cried on many puppies departing from me um but it's not the case anymore i think now it's more of a duty for me where i know that you know when one puppy goes i have you know 20 puppies that i need to look at and i and i have 20 puppies that are looking for a home so even though um right now you know our our relationship with the puppies that come in and go are extremely like short um but it's still so beautiful because we see their lives being transformed from a puppy who's actually scared and timid from the street uh, to uh, to to them going into homes being such really healthy happy social puppies from where they were and for what they become from the time you know they rescued from the street and they are being fostered in our foster homes and they finally get adopted uh, also to be going into homes that really want these puppies and uh, it's 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 a beautiful journey to just be there and witness it and the whole uh, i think it's also very spiritual um you know we we're saving so many lives and it's not just about uh, saying it but it's also really about watching them go through these beautiful journeys from where they were to what they actually become and how they so beautifully go into someone's home and settle down it's uh, it's also quite transformation for the people who are involved like so right now like i have a small team so even for the team i think it's extremely motivating to see that oh yes you know we got this puppy off the street it was a street dog back then and instead of just dying as a street dog we yes we've been a part of that change and we've been a part of that transformation mm-hmm. yeah yeah i i think i took for in terms of you know our, our initial conversation saying you know asala me and uh, dogs both both you know like the breed breed ones the uh, indie ones uh, we we stay off of uh, each other's uh, <laughs> yes radar yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 what what I is i think you uh, should uh, foster for us sometime you'll get over that fear <laughs> yeah so what what do you say to people like me that you know have have such uh, such a fear or a phobia to 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 around cats and dogs in particular um so the first thing i would definitely say is that we as humans um as much as we are a part of this planet uh, every other form of life it could be a cat or a dog or a you know like a chicken or a or a or a goat everybody every every form of life 
belongs to the planet, right? So if coexistence is something that's so important and crucial, we might not realize that it's it's so important. But in every um, in every degree, co coexistence is extremely crucial. And uh, when you start having that acceptance, and you start you know like observing these animals around you, um, you will start getting over that fear. Firstly, you need to accept that yes, they are also a part of this world. And the only way to go about it is to coexist. And when you start uh, with that kind of an attitude where you start accepting them to be a part of your world, you start observing and then you see that these, these are all like such beautiful uh, forms of life. Each of them are such characters. Every, I mean, you know, all these animals have such personalities and characters that you can actually start relating to simply by observing them. And yes, of course, you can definitely come back and, you know, reach out to us, my organization, Let's Live Together. We always have um, the need for foster homes who can help us, uh, you know, rescue puppies off the street. And it's a very two-way kind of a situation. Like, it's a win-win two-way, simply because um, we as an organization do not run a shelter like most organizations do. In fact, uh, my organization, Let's Live Together, is the only organization that does not have a physical shelter. Um so we do um, work with the community. Uh, the idea is because we, I especially, I totally believe that, um, you know, ev everyone's a part of the community, right? We're, we're the humans, animals, we, we're all equal. But at the same time, um, a lot of times when there are, like say, when there is an overpopulation of dogs, that issue is there definitely. When, and people say, oh no, like, you know, I just want to take off all the dogs from the street and leave them in a shelter that's really not right. So I, I, I totally believe that everyone um, is capable of being um, you know, a part of the change. Even in the smallest of ways, you can still help, you can still contribute um, to, co to their coexistence, to our coexistence, to be, you know, uh, making this world a better place for animals. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. So when you when you start observing, you start understanding that these these beautiful life forms are like so so loving, and then there's so much, you know, for them to give, and they're all innocent. In fact, if you give them one chance to love you and to express themselves, you will fall in love with them. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So hopefully, I think. Uh... We'll get to a point. I will get to a point where I will, uh, I can foster. Uh, I think adoption is still a way, way different, uh, different trajectory. Yeah. I think fostering can can be something I look at. But generally, for all listeners, I think what what also could be interesting is uh, if they want to foster or they want to adopt. Uh, how does that work? So how does maybe before that? Uh, how does it? What's the chain in which you know you get uh, details about you know what uh, what to then rescuing them and then okay so as an organization um we run a help plan where people call in saying uh, i have eight puppies around my house and the mother just passed away or you know she went out for food and she didn't come back it's been three hours or it's been three days sometimes and the mother hasn't come back so we uh, try and prioritize on taking in puppies who have um, lost their mother who probably haven't opened their eyes these are called neonatal puppies so um, that's that's mainly our focus area where we try and help puppies who don't have a mother. Or there are cases uh, sometimes when when the mother could be around, where, but you know she, she's in a very um, unsafe space where people are trying to like you know uh, poison her or kill her or she's being threatened all the time. So there are cases when people do not want any puppies at all in that space, and you know those are cases that we can we do consider and we take those puppies in. Um, so when we do take in puppies, we don't have a physical shelter to keep them. So when we do get a case, like say someone, you know, sends us a message saying the mother passed away, uh, can you take them in? So only those kind of cases, we have a puppy nursery that we can take in neonatal uh, puppies on an emergency basis. But most of the time, since we don't run a physical shelter, what we do is we actually reach out to different volunteers. We put it on Instagram or Facebook saying that, you know, this is a case that we've got this morning, will you be able to help and foster for us? So basically, uh, fostering is, um, you know, a commitment that one family or an individual can give a puppy um, for a very short period of time, that is still adoption. 
So adoption is basically where you do adopt and take the puppy home. Uh, fostering is basically where you only take the puppy till adoption. So mm. by the time uh, they look after the puppy, these families who register with us look after the puppy, we actually end up finding the puppy a permanent home. So each of these families, it could be like, you know, it could be somebody like you who's never had a dog before, who's probably really scared. But at some point, maybe you feel like maybe you should give it a try. Maybe you could give it a try to simply just get over your fear. Then fostering definitely is one um, fantastic way to get over your fear, simply because you, you do get to keep a puppy and it's not a permanent commitment. So when you are fostering a puppy, say, for example, so then you register with us as a foster parent. The complete expenses of the puppy is taken care of by the organization. So it could be food, vaccines, medical expenses. It could be, you know, like beddings and toys and whatever you want in terms of looking after the puppy. Everything is provided by the organization. And the permanent responsibility of keeping the puppy um, in the sense, you know, finding the puppy a permanent home is also the organization's. So when you take a puppy home, say, for example, you sign up and say, okay, fine, for the next one and a half months, I'll take a puppy home. Your responsibility is to simply keep the puppy happy, healthy, and social and active. And everything else the organization does in terms of finding the puppy a permanent home is our responsibility. So you just need to help us in keeping the puppy at home. So for us as an organization, um, instead of, say, run, for me, instead of running a huge shelter with, with like, say, 100 dogs or maybe even 500 dogs, um, when I do something like that, um, most of these dogs or puppies are all sitting in a cage and kennel all their life without any idea or without any it's it's not a closed loop system in the sense once the dog comes in there's no guarantee that the dog is going to find a home and uh, this is how most of the shelters around the world and in india work where they do of course take in a lot of animals but then there's no guarantee that ultimately they're going to find a home right so they end up actually living their life in that shelter and they end up dying there but a lot of times what happens is when, when say, there are um, hundreds and hundreds of animals, especially dogs or cats coming in, and one set or even just one particular animal has any infection, it could be distemper or gastroenteritis or rabies, the entire litter is wiped out. The entire lot in that space is wiped out. So the infection and the death rate in these shelters, in any traditional shelter, is so high. And it's not their fault, simply because... Uh, the infections can spread so fast that, uh, you know, it's it's like a death zone for these animals most of the time. So, so that is why, um, in fact, I have been uh, conducting a lot of workshops for different organizations um, on setting up foster systems, on setting up adoption systems in a manner where even if they do take in animals, at least they end up going into a foster system or eventually they get adopted. So, yeah. So I have presented my work in China, in Poland. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm. Well, that's a brilliant, uh, you know, it's like it's 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 a very well structured program in terms of you're saying, you know, you you don't put the, put all the animals in a shelter, put all of them in a cage, you give all of them a taste of uh, what is it to be at home. So they are accustomed to that Absolutely. and essentially easier to transit to to a you know a permanent house and also people who are uh, very passionate about this but then they're they may or may not have the resources to keep a dog full time so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a very nice uh, uh like a model that you have uh, so for all those that are listening uh, so you can as well uh, easily get in touch with achala or i think they have an instagram uh, wherein uh, you can directly get in touch and, uh, you know, register as a foster parent. So this uh, registering as a foster parent, so what, what are the requirements or the needs to uh, that you look for? Um, so we don't have a foster criteria as such, because I, I do firmly believe that anybody and everyone can foster. Uh, they just have to be open to the idea of keeping the puppy safe, loving the puppy and that's pretty much what is needed so there are a lot of times uh, when a lot of people say oh okay i go to work and i'm coming back only in the evening what do i do how will how can i keep a puppy so in such uh, in certain cases like this what we suggest is for them to take two puppies from us so that way they can feed the puppies leave some food behind or they can get someone to come check on the puppies even like 
um, once in about four hours or like four five hours, even if one person can just randomly come check on the pups, that's more than enough. Um, and the pups can stay by themselves. They don't really need any human uh, for that long. They can be by themselves. They just have to be kept safe uh, in a manner where they can be by themselves. So a lot of working people who, who want to foster for us end up taking two puppies. So that way it's easier for them where they can leave the puppies by themselves mm -hmm. and uh, they can go to work. So there are different kinds of people who reach out to us. Some could be families who've never had a dog and they want a lot of training on puppy care and guidance on you know how to look after them or what to feed them. So we give, a, we give out like a diet chart. Um, we do give them like complete guidance on how to look after these puppies. So in terms of criteria, I think the only thing we kind of request is at least to foster for a minimum of three weeks, you know, two to three weeks is like a minimum that we ask because we do put in a lot of effort in terms of guiding them and training them and all that. So just at least for that factor, we say, okay, you know, you know even, even if you're finding it extremely hard, just manage for two weeks and then we take the puppy back. Because there are uh, cases where, you know, people might say, okay, I'll, I'll take it for longer and they feel like, oh, they're not able to manage and, you know, stuff like that. So yes, we do take in the pups back. But uh, I would say in an ideal scenario, if you can keep the puppy till adoption, yes, that's the best thing to do. Or at least keep the puppy for two to three weeks, you know, as a minimum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they just um, have to send us an email. They have to fill up a form. Uh, we ask for one photo and an ID card. And we do ask for a small donation uh, as a registration, one-time registration fee. It's either like a 500 or a thousand. It's one of that. So when, when that once that is done, it's a it's a permanent registration. This is they don't have to do that for every puppy they take in, or they don't have to do that every year or anything like that. It's just a one-time registration. That way we have all their documents. And people can foster n number of pups. So each time they foster, they don't have to do this registration. It's just a one-time registration one -time. that we ask for. Yes. And uh, yeah, so so a lot of people, in fact, who foster for us are um, are fostering throughout the year, you know. So they take in like two puppies, they get adopted and they take in two more pups. So sometimes they take in like, uh, you know, three puppies and those pups get adopted, then they take in more pups. So then what happens is through the year, uh, we have foster homes. And it's the thing is with our work, the biggest challenge is that we don't have enough foster homes. And it's only when we do have enough foster homes that we are actually able to save more puppies off the street. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Yeah. So you, from what I understand, so when you get get a puppy to your for, to to the office or to the organization, uh, then you then you send out a message and people respond, and that's uh, so when as and when they go to the uh, you know foster homes, you can have more capacity to uh, work with more yes. puppies. Yes, yes. In in fact, uh, it's a little more critical than that. Simply because we, since we don't have any physical space here at all, what we do is as soon as we get like a report of a case, um, mm. we put out like an Instagram post asking for an emergency foster. So there are a lot of times when new people register with us saying, hey, you know what, I can actually, I have some time and I'm free this week and or for the next one month and I want to foster. There are new people who reach out to us like that. Or it could also be any of our regular foster parents who reach out to us saying, yes, we, we can foster. So the critical um, thing is, um, unless we have a foster home, we can't even bring those animals into our system. Simply because when we get them in, we don't have a physical space to keep them. So then we'll first have to arrange for like a foster and only then bring them in. So that means to say, if, if there is a case of eight puppies who are reported to us, um, and if if you're only able to find like say four foster parents, unfortunately we will we are in a position to only take in four pups. You know, so so it, as um, I think I think that for us is like the biggest challenge, yeah, because there are so many um, animals out there constantly needing help. There are so many homeless puppies out there constantly needing help that this becomes like a big challenge. Mm. So what what I understand is you get a request and you find the first home and then take them in. You don't take them in and then find the first home. You you do that. Uh, yeah. Yes. That that's why foster homes become such a, a crucial important element of our work. 
um, simply because if there are no foster homes, there's no rescue. You know, so we are we are that dependent on people. Um, but at the same time, when they do end up fostering, uh, it's such a beautiful journey, and it's so beautiful to see that these puppies who could have probably, you know, died on the street, now have a chance to live simply because people have you know turned up, and then uh, we have foster homes now. Yeah. Mm. So, in terms of, you know, uh, I worked with a few NGOs and I know for a fact that fundraising is, is a perennial, uh, uh, you know, like, yeah. problem. I don't, I don't, I can't say if it's a problem, but it's a perennial thing to have. Uh, it's always on top of a uh, founder's mind. Uh, so, how do you fundraise? So, how does it work for you? Um. Definitely, it's a challenge. I think uh, if if we had more support, I I'm I'm sure, you know, I would want to say, you know, what like I want to do 200 puppies a month, but unfortunately, we don't have that capacity right now. In fact, uh, we we in a year we struggle to push and pull and somehow get through to try and make it into 200 puppies a year, uh, simply because. The coordination between foster parents and you know till adoption just takes so much time that means to say i need like a staff team who is actually doing so much coordination and transport and all that stuff so right now at the moment um, it, it's a struggle it's a struggle and in terms of how we manage is uh, we have people um, who, who come by and say okay i will i will give you like 200 rupees a month or i will give you 500 rupees a month in fact, there's one donor who actually gives us 20 bucks every every month. So um, we have we have like about 10, 20 people who donate like you know some certain amount of money like every month. But I think um, and unfortunately, uh, you know, like uh, we, we should be doing so much more, but we are yet to reach that stage where I can say yes, uh, we we are financially sustainable and you know. I, I would want to say bring it on, like send out how many ever puppies you can, and I want to save all of them. But we are still not in that space. Where, uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Achal, I think it's a it's an opportunity for you to use my uh, podcast platform to definitely genuinely check with uh, my network as to how they can support. So please do. Uh, let them know as to how they can support and what happens with that support. Uh, oh, yes, definitely. I think uh, um, it, it's definitely a huge uh, opportunity to have received uh, this, you know, um, offer. <laughs> Thank you. One is uh, in terms of support, I think uh, what we desperately need is uh, um, constant support, like consistency. So in the sense, if, if people can actually help us with monthly donations, even if it's 1,000 rupees or 2,000 rupees, um, I think what we need at this moment is, is that uh, backup support that we know that, you know, like, uh, that we have that backup. And they're like, um, because there are, there are uh, salaries to pay, that, that is, uh, we have about two places that we've taken for rent, that we have rents to pay. Mm -hmm. So these are all our overheads and more than anything else. So when we have this backup constant support, then we know we can do more, we can get more people on board, we can hire more people. Um, who can help us do much more and rescue much more, you know, and uh, help many more pups. So I think for me, um, yes, firstly is, uh, first support would definitely be if people can help actually support us with monthly donations. Yes, that can definitely help us. Um, and um, if there are corporates who can support us with through their CSR programs, uh, right now we have, uh, luckily we have Bosch. Uh, in fact, Bosch is pretty much like a, uh, the first um, and only organization who's actually come forward to support us in a manner where they are actually also sending their employees every month. Um, and we do those uh, puppy cuddling sessions every month. We have two of their batches coming by and uh, we have like about 15, 20 of them coming in every two weeks who are now, you know, who come by and they spend time with the puppies. They spend time with uh, helping us, feeding the puppies, giving them a bath and like it's it's a couple of our program that we do and i think uh, for them it's a great exposure in terms of like for the employees to understand how you know they can support uh, a cause like this much better so if there are, there are um, uh, companies like that who could support us through their csr i think that would definitely be fantastic 
um in in terms of how it's going to impact us is that um we have systems we have fantastic systems in place we have uh, processes and procedures in place um we are now in our 15th year of service um so in in, in terms of the foundation the foundation is extremely strong but for me to from here grow and stabilize and take this forward um i think I, i would definitely want to like request people to you know come reach out to us support us firstly as yes, foster for us if you can if you cannot like you know like um, help us with the monthly donation and if you can do something much bigger then through your company yes definitely support us on the come with us so you will be uh, enabling not just uh, the fostering process the adoption process but also you will be changing lives uh, not not of uh, you know all the all the uh, Uh, canine pets also the family that come absolutely pets, so. absolutely yeah so for every every home that actually takes a puppy from us we have seen such transformation in these homes uh such bonding and there's so much love and there you know like the bonding is just next level in a lot of families and it's just beautiful to watch that and more than anything else instead of just going ahead and buying the breed dog um even if they don't adopt you know when they are actually just fostering for us they do become a huge part of our uh, massive life changing program here simply because it's only because of them that we are actually able to bring a puppy off the street and find it a home so yes it's it's definitely um in terms of impact we we are working with the community to be a part of this change uh, it's impacting so many lives animals and humans together yeah absolutely so you have enough uh, for you know 4000 foster homes uh, like if if they are an our option has gone through with 4000 puppies and 4000 foster homes that means 4000 stories so you have enough to you know make your own podcast <laughs> definitely there are such uh, such beautiful um miraculous stories out there that have changed people's lives and attitude yeah. towards animals there are so many people who have been so scared of animals but now it's these families who you know probably had like a mother who was very scared of dogs or a father who was very scared but like if you look at them now they are the ones who are actually taking care of the animals they are the ones that, you know like the mother is the one feeding the puppy all the time saying you know you know inna jaasti you know if you know she makes it and stuff and then it's the fathers who actually actually you know start playing with the puppy eating the puppy out for a walk so it's it's beautiful how um some families have actually taken up responsibilities and at let's keep together i run a um an indie dog pet club banta so mm. people who adopt from my organization every literally almost every month we try and meet and we we go out for like picnics and stuff and it's just uh it's just so beautiful to watch these families bond so beautifully with their dogs and it's wonderful you know when when these dogs come back and meet us and it's it's beautiful it's like it feels like a whole journey that's complete and that's where it feels like yes all all the effort that we put into that particular pup has been like so worth it yeah any stories that you like to share because i have i have been at least only given an appetizer so you know it's beautiful it's a lovely journey uh, we been given <laughs> appetizers uh, in any one one or two uh, uh, anecdotes that you would like to share um in fact there are, there are definitely many in fact uh, just uh, day before we went out uh, for our like to celebrate our 14th anniversary we all met for an anniversary meet and this was uh, so beautifully done in in one of our adopters farm who had invited like the entire bunch to you know uh, go over to her farm and she offered breakfast and lunch for everybody this was for almost like 50 60 people and for me um this this was a, like i i keep uh, counting my blessings all the time and for every little thing that that is you know nice that happens i feel like yes it's another miracle in my life and um, it it was so beautiful like she didn't have to do that as an adopter but uh, she she was so open and her family was so open they ended up inviting almost 50 60 of us and fed us twice and mm-hmm. you know spent so much and they gave us so many so much produce from their farm after that and it was such a um joyous moment and and the best part about this just this particular story is also for the fact that this dog that she adopted his name is Kellogg's and he didn't find a home for a year 
Mm-hmm. He kept moving from foster homes to foster homes to foster homes. Finally, he had grown so big that we weren't even able to find foster homes, and I put him in a paid, you know, paid boarding center. Um, and uh, and and yeah, like uh, she she finally adopted him, and that was like a big miracle because uh, he didn't find a home for a year, and every time we we get stuck with a puppy or two like that. it's it's a lot of stress person it's stress for me because constantly in my mind i'm like oh you know like he hasn't found a home or she hasn't found a home and like what am i going to do it's it's like you know a clock is ticking and if, with every minute passing it's it's scary and so there's a lot of worry personally also saying oh that baby hasn't found a home yet or this one hasn't found a home yet but um, somehow uh, it's it you know like things just fall in place and every puppy that comes into let's live together finds a home so there's really never a point where oh this this dog has been with us for four years and it still hasn't found a home it might even if it does take four years they still ultimately do end up finding uh, homes so there are cases like your logs where you know they have they've been with us for a year or a year and a half and there's just so much stress that oh you know that baby hasn't found a home or this kid hasn't found a home yet but uh, ultimately there's some family that uh, this that just comes in and it, the family turns out to be just so perfect and and they wanted a dog exactly like that um so so this is one such case where kellogg's has fit in so beautifully into that pack and into that home into that farm um yeah <laughs> so there are, there are many yeah. cases like this where uh it's it's unbelievable to see how they don't find a home at all and finally they end up going to like the perfect home and that family was just looking for an animal like a dog like that like with that personality and it's it's so it's like for me for me this are all these uh, small miracles that keep happening where i'm that fills my heart <laughs> yeah mm. Ah, uh, fantastic! So, Kel, the story of Kellogg's is is very interesting, uh, and you know, yeah. I uh, I have had uh, discussions with my friends as to you know, like anything, even uh, giving a name for somebody, uh, I know someone else's baby is is a is a big challenge. So, what what what's the what's the etymology that <laughs> uh, happens? So, what what's the secret sauce to finding? names for uh, all these uh, young ones oh in fact and let's look together we have uh, um, <laughs> we we have a policy now that all our puppies will be named after food <laughs> so we we come okay. up with like the best and the cutest names possible uh, in fact uh, we have one pup who is in the name of adike mm-hmm. uh, you know beetle nut in canada Love. There's one pup called Gus Gus here right now. There's one <laughs> Tulsi and Pudina, and it's it's just too cute because our our like our puppy board names are filled with like uh, food menu names. It look like you just walk into a restaurant, and it's like a whole set of like uh, you know food ingredients, but it's all puppy names. So the last three years now we've been doing this, and it's it's so cute. It's so fun to just find names and you know like name these puppies. uh yeah that that's like a very like fun exercise that let's do together uh, that all of us like kind of mm-hmm. uh come together and brainstorm and yeah now we've run we've been running out of names so there's a lot of brainstorming that happens uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah but i think if you're going and in terms of uh, putting them into sweets and other things i think you have you have a long list to go until you finish because you have like the even in terms of vegetarian food uh, there's a lot uh, Yeah. yeah 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 yes sir but then that's very interesting like yeah pudina gaskase arke yeah yeah very nice so i know it it must feel good when you uh, do this ritual it, it it's a very nice very therapeutic feeling yes yes totally so any anywhere i'm reading a book or i'm at a restaurant and i find some really interesting name in the menu it, it immediately goes into my list of puppy names <laughs> So, yeah. So maybe whoever is listening also can add to that list. Uh, dra- Absolutely. We'll drop a message to Arshala, and uh, you know, it is uh, quite quite going to make her job a little more easier. So, Absolutely. <laughs> like yeah. our kings were, you know, uh, first one, second one, king, the king, judge, king, that one, Chandragupta the second, the Maurya the second. So we'll have to be Pudina yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> 
ஒரு <laughs> Dewberry, so that that was like a litter of eight pups, I think, who came. So they all got like the same family names. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, and and, um, and the and the best thing is they can't complain saying, "Hey, this this name I don't like." <laughs> Whatever you give, they take it. <laughs> and sometimes it's too cute. Sometimes it's too cute. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's been a a lot of uh, you know. It, interesting things that i've been asking you but i i still haven't asked that question in terms of i think when when i heard your full name i i had a very uh, strong expectation of somebody very regal uh, it's a very very interesting name so achala bala dandapani so what what's the history with that uh, name where does it come from so uh achala is a sanskrit word uh um, it means form form as a mountain so my mother wanted me um, to be like a very strong personality with with a like with a very stable mind and um, you know i i think to a large extent i have i have proved it uh, through my work where i've been very uh, stubborn and i've been sticking on to it and i've you know it's been like come what may i will still you know run this and i will make sure i will try and save as many um uh it's actually uh, a tamil name it's a it's a name of uh, ganesha's uh, brother murugan mm-hmm. so yeah but that's no Anil, uh, can you hear me? I can't see you. Yeah, yeah. There was an internet uh, problem. So I'm back. Yeah. Okay. You will have to explain. Yeah. Machala, Achala. If somebody so, does, that doesn't work. Um, Achala means form. Form as a mountain. So I'm off video. Because I think uh, the net is bad. Net, net's not really. our friend right now so but you, i am able to hear you and see you can uh, go ahead okay so um should i should i repeat it yeah please okay so when uh, achala basically means form it's a sanskrit word it means form as a mountain um and i think rightfully as proved that uh, you know um i'm strong mentally and my my mom wanted me to like really stay like super strong and uh, be this person who doesn't you know like uh, waver and i think i've proved it right by sticking on to let's live together and with with all the hardship that's come so far um i'm i'm still here and i'm looking forward to many more years that i can help and save so many lives so so that part of the name yes fits in very well and uh, baladandapani is my dad's name um it's actually a tamil name and it's uh, murugar's name ganesha's brother is murugar and mm-hmm. it's his name um yeah so so my dad's no more um i lost him when i was 18 and uh, yeah so it's it's just been like my mother and me and my mother for me is um is my is my epitome of compassion and kindness and strength and love she's been my like biggest and best uh, critic she's been there throughout as a pillar and uh, yeah i think everything i i am right now or everything i have done so far i owe to my mother mm-hmm. yeah yeah thank you for sharing that and yeah i think uh, from from our end uh, thank you to uh, thank you and gratitude to your mom um, because uh, yeah, when you shared this uh, space in terms of you know you her her being with you all throughout i think it's it's not the easiest of journeys um as a volunteer myself i know it's very difficult uh, to do something that you're very interested in uh, there there's there are societal pressures there are you know personal pressures uh, 
but but you need to have a bedrock that that keeps you going uh, all through and i completely understand the gravity of the space 14 years in a, in a place uh, i think it's 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 another level altogether so and i am i am happy and i'm proud uh, of whatever achievements uh, you've done and i I'm, i'm hopeful that somewhere out there i can also maybe add to uh, whatever you're doing so thanks thanks and gratitude uh, pranams from our end uh, to your mom as well so you said uh, thank, you. thank you for having me sir yeah so my first uh, impression of the point i was curious was for uh, uh, in terms of maybe that name really uh, resonated with me very strongly because of the monk that i had seen uh, his name is dandapadi he is a monk from pund who is now in australia and he has uh, like a meditation okay. and all of that so okay <laughs> yeah that was an, okay. that that came uh, stood and then i think uh, the all in terms of the resolve the whole space i think i i wanted to find out if if dandapani and you are somehow related <laughs> uh, so yeah that was that was where it was but then uh, thank you for sharing <laughs> this uh, story with me and uh, maybe, maybe if someday i become a monk we might be related <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, i mean definitely yeah yeah monk who fasted uh, 10000 uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah hmm. yeah <laughs> and yeah, i'm also curious in terms of uh, i ha- how is that transition from you know like an advertising space for years in chitrakala prashat which i think is a unique experience in its own to to get onto something that's that's not a conventional path of work yeah 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 so um i think i think um i think even there i, I should my mom plays that big role where um you know from from an advertising background i had my own classmates who went to london like for to do their masters and then we were in college in fact our entire team a batch you know like uh, we had plans of going to london and to do our masters and it was the year that they left was the year that i actually started to get together and that was uh, the beginning of the year is when babe met with an accident and i had to get a home i had to get my job and all that stuff happened and uh, um uh, so for the first yes definitely the first one two years were extremely difficult also because it was those year initial years where i had my best friends back in london doing their masters and they would they, they would send me updates and I would constantly you know be worried saying like what am i doing here like you know this, this was my, that was my dream because of course i had no idea that i want to start let's live together back then and i didn't know what the future would hold and i didn't know what i was going to do with my life and um of course there were there were a lot of doubts when i started let's look at the thing like yes i i want to help and i want to be there and save these animals but is this what the future is going to hold or you know if, if this is what i should be doing or if, if it's even the right thing to do to to quit my job to quit my career and and to start something like this there, there was definitely a lot of apprehension there was a lot of fear but i think if there's just been one person who's been um, constantly back in me saying no 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 like it's not it's not about the money like if you if you don't want to you should live in a manner where you're useful to people and it's always been my mother who's who's been there saying that constantly saying no like don't don't look at money uh, that's something that anyone can do that's something that anyone can earn but if you're able to live in a manner where you're actually useful to like four people before you die um uh, she's like that that's that's the path that you should take and she's like this, this what you're doing with let's be together is more than enough you you don't need something beyond it um so i would i would constantly Yeah. of course i wanted to believe in it and i you know i i, I think i put my heart into believing her and that, that's how it took the path but there was this uh, you know deep inside this guilt saying may, maybe i should do, i should probably do something where i'm earning to like help my mother or support her because she was um, a single you know parent we lost my dad quite quite early so um, it's also been a very emotional emotional long journey for me to understand and for me to say yes no you know what like this is enough like what i'm doing is i'm if i'm actually 
really able to help and really able to make so much impact this is more than enough and i don't need to run behind money and i don't need to like you know like um really value that kind of a life better so yes it it took some time for me to um i think um start seeing the impact in my own life also because for me um as much as i love dogs um this little guilt was there but then slowly as my work started increasing and i and i did see a lot of firstly um my mom was like a like a constant you know support there was just no a uh, doubt in her there was not even like one minute of doubt in her when she's ever doubted saying oh maybe you shouldn't have done this but she's always been there my back support saying this is the way to go about it and this is all you need to do and don't just look back don't compare your life with anybody and just just do this and you'll be fine you'll figure it out life will life will you know like figure it out for you but then this is fine so uh, i think uh, yeah so 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 then as and when i started doing much more work i would for me i would go run and go back to her saying no like you know what am i doing am i doing the right thing and she would constantly say no no you're fine because every time i and back then i used to get very emotionally attached to my puppies and i would start crying saying i don't want to let the puppy go like what do i do so so it's been a very emotional um, battle also because you also need to fight your own self and your own emotions to to become that strong to be able to deal with so many cases and so many animals and so many you know like so much cruelty and um so yeah so it's also been a very emotionally uh, challenging journey um and uh, i've been yeah i've been holding on to it and for each that's why that's why you know it's it's so beautiful to see these puppies with my adopted families then that is one thing that gives me that assurance saying no all the effort i put into that one pup was worth it so that has always given me like more confidence to do more work saying yes yes i am doing the right thing and i this is the right path and i'm i just have to believe in it and i just have to start um, focusing on what i want to do and uh, yeah to to uh, to a large extent and i think that's how i started believing in miracles and everything some every time something happened i would say oh, yes that's another miracle and then i would add on saying yes that's another miracle so i would start in um just a collective you know journey full of miracles i think for me mm-hmm. uh, of course there are there have been ups and downs but you know it's it's been a journey for a so i i found a topic uh, i found a title for my podcast uh, story full of miracles also um uh you know it, you know, yes i think uh, in fact uh, i think uh, i have uh, every year i have i have a box mm-hmm. or i have a book it's called the miracle box the miracle book and i and i write down like everything some every time something happens i write it down in that book and uh, you know uh, <laughs> yeah mm. <coughs> but do seriously consider hosting so that's own. that's been the transition from the advertising field to coming into let's look together mm-hmm. 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 consider consider uh, making another can you hear podcast me? yeah yeah i can hear you i think both of our networks are bad so yeah so i think now i can see you on video but i think it's still yeah. uh but yeah so do consider making a podcast because i think you have uh, another uh, a previous uh, avatar with advertising and all of that so and you you're doing something that's that's fantastic and and uh definitely life changing for a lot of us um, and i'm hoping that you know your story inspires more and more people to do what they're passionate about make make a difference yeah, yeah. uh not not only run behind money but i think money is important but not 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 always the only thing that works yeah 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 a lot of Absolutely. things that i uh, take away i think the audience also does take away and i think there's there's enough potential for you to 
maybe we reach more people get more uh, traction to the adoption projects the fostering uh, place and, and i think yeah. generally meet so consider your own podcast <laughs> thank you sunil thank you so much that's really sweet of you and coming from you i think thank you so much um, absolutely mm. yeah. so think thoughts uh, it's been a fantastic hour and hour ish in terms of talking with you and i guess yeah there's there's enough and more for another podcast episode but uh, for today <laughs> uh, uh, we you know we have covered a lot of this so i would love to host you again Are you not okay, happy? sure. Thank you. You host me in your podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Any any closing thank thoughts? Any anything that you would like to leave the audience with? Um, I think uh, closing thought. I would say that uh, you know the the world is so large, um, and there's so much there's so much darkness there. There's so much cruelty there that these animals go through. um but if you choose kindness and if you choose compassion on a day to day basis just just try and choose nice to be uh, you know just, just any dog who's sleeping around your house instead of showing it away just just be a little kind just you know walk with, walk across the dog and you know let it sleep stuff like that keep keep water bowls for the birds around your house keep water bowls for the cows that come by um every every little thing that we do um you might not see the impact immediately but if it's it's actually helping someone in somewhere um i think that's that's you know these these could be small steps to take forward um and it, yeah like whoever is listening watching if you all have people who are wanting a breed like in your house someone says hey you know what let's let's go get a dog um most of the time the first thing that comes to their mind is to go to a breeder or a pet shop i would request them to just walk down their lane there are hundreds of dogs in each community starving and it just it's just so much love that they could give but they have nobody to give it to you know like um you yeah, just pick a puppy off the street if you're not in bangalore if you're in bangalore please come by to let's live together and adopt and if you're not in bangalore just go by open your heart and homes to the animals around even if you can't adopt one dog just you know like just feed a couple of like animals around your house be nice be kind um it's it's not going to take anything away from us when you're kind and compassionate um but for them um the world is definitely going to become a better place for animals so that that would be my <laughs> yeah yeah i have uh, nothing to add except you know uh, say thank you for all that you do and i think uh, sharing this uh, this space with with me and sharing all of your uh, stories uh in 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 the most authentic uh, honest way possible so it's been a joy thank you sunil yeah thank you for you and also to thank you for santosh for uh, introducing me to you and uh, let's see where this goes and uh, hopefully yeah. more starts to yes definitely looking forward thank you so much thank you so much yeah, yeah. so yeah. to the viewers and uh, listeners uh, so if you have uh, i am i am absolutely sure you you've been inspired so if you are interested to foster if you are interested to donate to uh, asala's foundation and help more and more uh, lives and souls get a lot more happiness please feel free to uh, get in touch with her or also even drop me a message i will also be hosting the links and the uh, contact information that can actually enable you to make a change with that uh, i officially close uh, today's episode it's been fun it's been uh, interesting it's been emotional it's been a lot of things and i hope you've had a good time uh, as well so see you and take care thank you